I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here because we're going to have some fine details that I'm going to want to be close up on while I'm creating this path so I can get these curves snuggled right up to the edges here so I can make a nice selection and place this cleanly on another background. Now I'm pretty close but you see around these chains here I have a lot of fine detail so I'm going to zoom in even closer so I can really get around those chains without having any white spaces or the background showing up so don't be shy sometimes you do have to get in really close to your image to get it just how you want it so if you got to do it, you got to do it. It'll make for a nice clean selection. And once again, it set that's what set set you apart from someone who's really just trying to get it done really quickly and it winds up looking bad when it doesn't have to. Just take a few extra seconds and zoom in get really close to your image and make accurate selections now before I start on this inside part and these little parts in here I want to call your attention to something we go ahead and get the path selection tool select our path and in the options bar you have the option to either add this to the shape area subtract it from the shape area, intersect it with the shape area, or exclude it from the shape area. Since we have since we have this outer area, adding this uh, inside handle to the area won't do anything. It'll just be one big selection. I want to actually minus this inside handle area from our outer selection so I'm gonna right now while this is selected click on the minus from selection area so when we actually create a selection with these paths there will be a hole here otherwise if I didn't do that now I, I can do it later but if I didn't do that if I just left it as it was this whole area will be selected including this inside part it will be like we didn't even have any paths in here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and now it'll be selected as the default for when I select these inner parts here so I'm gonna go back with the pen tool and start making the rest of our selection for the inside part of this handle just on the inside of these chains and I'm just clicking and dragging out points I'll cut off terminate one of the control handles uh, from time to time so I can get a little bit more control over it now if I actually want to move this point like I'm doing now I am selecting the command or the control button on the PC uh, command on the Mac and that will allow me to actually get the direct selection tool which is the hollow arrow and it will allow me to move this point I won't just be moving the control handles I'll actually be moving the point and sometimes you want to do that and I can do that without having to go in the toolbar and select it by using the keyboard shortcut of command on the Mac or control on the PC it's another keyboard shortcut that saves me time while I'm editing these paths so I don't have to go back and do it afterwards and that's no problem I mean when you first get started you won't know all the keyboard shortcuts but learning the keyboard shortcuts dramatically speeds up your work inside of Photoshop and also if somebody's looking over your shoulder they they tend to think hey this guy knows what he's doing he's using a lot of keyboard shortcuts I don't see him going over to the toolbar but he keeps switching tools so that's like an added benefit for learning how to use the keyboard shortcuts people tend to think you know what you're doing 
Now you may or may not know what you're doing, but that's a handy little side effect. So, let me just make sure that these paths are set to minus. I'll go in and select all these at once, and I'll put it on the subtract from shape area. That way, when I go to the pass palette, I'll bring up my pass palette over here. I go to the pass palette and I select my path. When I go to uh, bring up the context sensitive menu by either right clicking or control clicking on the Mac and go to make selection. I want to make sure the feather radius is set to zero and then anti-alias is checked off and I want to create a new selection that's the default operation click OK okay let's try this again have a little snafu there once again, I'm going to bring up the context sensitive menu by right clicking or control clicking on a Mac. Going down to make selection. The make selection dialog box pops up. I want to make sure that the feather radius is set to zero. Anti alias is checked off. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And that's going to create a selection for me. I'll pull the pass palette out of the way. And you'll see that we have our blue teapot fully selected the inside parts are not selected so that's like a hole punched all the way through now we can take our coffee mug we'll move this window down and I'm going to bring up a new background I can take the move tool and actually move our teapot from its background white background to a new background and set it right there and there you have it we use the pen tool to create a selection now let's go over a quick summary of our lesson all we did was we used the pen tool to trace a path around our teapot object we traced the path around the inside of the objects inside the chains we made sure that we were subtracting those paths on the inside from the path that we had created initially and then we took it and dragged it onto a new background join me for our next lesson where I'll be showing you how and why paths can be used in InDesign or Quark Express for some desktop publishing functions thank you for viewing this desktop publishing secrets revealed video for more information on how you can learn about Desktop Publishing Secrets Revealed DVD learning course, head on over to DesktopPublishingSecretsRevealed.com. Thank you.